growing DTH business in emerging markets. Emerging supplier to cable headlines in the US. And as I said, uh, we host some of the fastest growing DTH platforms in emerging markets around the world. A snapshot of our customers. <coughs> uh, you will probably find almost all of the blue chip customers around the world being um, our customers, certainly also including the BBC. We're very happy to have them on our satellites as well. And if you look uh, for African customers, you see Corona Super TV from uh, Eastern Africa, you have Top TV South Africa, Infinity TV uh, from Nigeria, Canal Horizon is also one of our customers, French speaking, uh, Western Africa. Today, uh, seven satellites are serving the African continent. We are enlarging our fleet. Uh, in the next six months, we will add two satellites, bringing incremental capacity to the region. Uh, the satellites are called SS4 and SS5. Um, these two satellites um, have got an investment volume of uh, 1 billion US dollar. That also shows you uh, how strongly we believe in the opportunities here in Africa, in the African region. Uh, two more satellites to come. So in 2014, we will have 11 satellites that are exclusively serving the African continent for various activities, not just DTH or broadcasting, but our strategic focus is certainly growing the broadcasting environment here in the region. <clears throat> I have already mentioned some of our customers. Um, here I also added uh, uh, enterprise telecommunication operators, MTN, Telcom SA, Gateway, so a broad portfolio of customers um, that we have already today. We have our headquarters in Johannesburg. Uh, we have uh, a regional office in uh, Agana, in Ghana, and we will open another office in Eastern Africa next year, but probably in Nairobi. Yeah. Might be, maybe in Kampala, but currently the tendency goes to Nairobi. When we talk about digital TV in Africa, <coughs> it's a bus. I mean, it's not a buzzword, but uh, some stats here. I mean, first of all, I always have difficulties to find out, and I'm sure I'm not the only one here. How many TV homes do we have in Africa? Uh, we conduct a lot of research by ourselves because it's very difficult to find uh, figures that are trustworthy that we also believe in. And we have we run a research project um, which is called the Satellite Monitors, which is a very reliable source mainly in Europe to find out how many TV homes in the country, how many watchful satellites from Astra Satellite, ASIA Satellite and so on and so forth. And we have introduced this methodology now also to the African market. And for example, in Nigeria, I got a figure out of that research. I think it was 8 million TV homes. But I also had four or five benchmark surveys. And the number of TV households in Nigeria varies from 7 million to 15 million. I mean, what is now the real figure? And when you talk about broadcasting, especially advertisement based broadcasting, your broadcaster wants to know, I mean, basics. How many TV homes? And the majority of African markets come down to this question. The next question is. How many digital TV offerings, or how many can receive digital TV? It's also a big myth. And finally, how many watch already digital today? There are a lot of challenges when it comes to research data, and to have this information available, that is in most of the cases essential for broadcasters, be it pay or free to be operators. When you compare, I've made a small comparison, <coughs> Europe and Sub-Saharan Africa. The population is double the size, more than one billion in Sub-Saharan Africa. When it comes to TV homes, we are about equal. Uh, about 240 million TV, uh, sorry, households, sorry, households. About 240 million households. Um, TV households, you see, in Europe, almost everyone has got a TV today. Africa, one third, a bit more than 80 million. 81.6, maybe in Greece, the figures are about three, four months old. But uh, there's also potential because with an income, with a growing middle class, with high incomes, these homes will get connected. They will buy TVs. And all these TV screens need to be, get connected to an infrastructure. And this is also where we believe that satellite will be the leading infrastructure connect, to connect these homes uh, in the future. So for consumer electronic guys like Samsung I see here, it's going to be a very attractive market potential. Um, because the growing, growing income um, will make buying TV sets more affordable in the future. Um, <clears throat> when we look at the TV reception today, and we again compare Europe uh, with, uh, with Africa, 70% in Europe is already digital. 70% of Europeans are watching digital programming via satellite, via DTT, via IP, via cable. 
Here in Africa, we have around 10%, <clears throat> so 7 to 8 million, the figure that we have all heard already. And it's mainly satellite at this point of time. It's mainly pay TV satellite, uh, subscription-based TV that is driving digital TV today in Africa. If you look at forecasts, you can pick a lot of them. I have chosen one from Dataxis. I could have taken Euro, Euro Consult or also others. But the message I want to bring across is digital, digital TV in the future will mainly be driven by two infrastructures, satellite and digital terrestrial. Based on the assumption that the African governments will meet the deadline of 2015. And this is one of the topics um, I would like to address quickly now because we as SAS, we have set up workshops with the governments, with various governments um, here in Africa, to discuss with them the opportunities and also the challenges of digital migration, to see where they stand. Um, there's a very good report from Balancing Act on, uh, on um, the status of digitalization, digital migration, and about 20 countries have not even started looking into that. When I see um, Chris chart uh, on, on, on France, how long it took France, once they were sorted, to migrate from analog to digital, the majority of African countries have not even thought about processes. In addition to that, it's a very, very costly exercise. I, I add on what uh, Chris said when it comes to France. The French government spent 800 million US dollars to upgrade the network infrastructure to reach still not 100% of the population, but only 95. Then they have realized they have to complement the remaining 5%. They created an offer called TNT Sat, which doesn't mean anything else than digital satellite. So they replicated the terrestrial offering and put it on satellite to bridge the remaining 5%. So it's a very costly exercise. It takes a, a, a long time to migrate from analog to digital. Uh, and uh, these are certainly challenges um, we will ha have, to have to face um, here in, in, in Africa. But as a satellite operator, <coughs> we are ready to support here. Um, digital, digitalization has certainly also a lot of advantages for the consumer. You, you add new services, you have new content, based on higher bandwidth efficiency, um, you have new type of services, high definition, interactivity, video on demand, and it also allows further developments in the future, like 3D TV. Um, <clears throat> what is not common knowledge when it comes to satellite is, satellite is not just DTH. Satellite is a primary infrastructure delivery platform also for other uh, distribution ways. So satellite, can feed and feeds in many markets around the world, terrestrial networks. Satellite feeds cable TV. Satellite feeds mobile networks, web, IP TV. So satellite is not just ETH. Therefore, for us, there's various business models when it comes to digitalization here in Africa. We either support directly our customer base, DTH customers, and reach the broadcasting side, but also complement um, digital terrestrial not the network rollout, feeding the towers, uh, have cooperations with mobile network operators, they also use our satellite capacity. So satellite is not just DTH, but also uh, the primary um, delivery mechanism for any other infrastructure. So what do we do? <coughs> this is a picture taken recently in Douala. Uh, this is in Cameroon. Because we strongly believe we have to be in the region together with the customers to identify the specific situation in the market. Every market is different. You cannot compare Cameroon with Ivory Coast, with South Africa, with uh, Uganda. Every market is different and we have a customized approach per market together with our customers. What is important for us or what we call the virtual circle of broadcasting, at the end of the day you need to have strong customers on the satellite. Strong customers like ESTV who are unfortunately not on our satellites. We'd love to have them, um, but uh, they've chosen for a different operator. Um, you have to have strong customers because strong customers, strong broadcasters normally attract new broadcasters. If you have gentlemen like DSTV or Canal Horizon or other BBC strong players on the satellite, new channels would like to be attached to these brands, to be close to them. Because normally what happens is uh, a consumer doesn't install 10 satellite dishes with the exception of Abidjan, where I've been last week. I've never seen so many satellite dishes in my life on a roof. They spot on every kind of satellite. But normally, consumers have one or two satellite dishes. They, they, they select a satellite based on the content that is available on the satellite. So content neighborhood is very, very, um, the content that you have on a satellite and the neighborhood, in the 
the challenge that you have on a satellite is very important to drive the market take up. Because if you have the right content, you can market it to the consumer. If you have attractive content, you can do marketing campaigns. If your channels are not perceived being attractive enough by the end consumer, you will not, you will not be successful in driving um, a, a household uptake via satellite or via any other reception. It doesn't matter. If your content is not attractive, uh, consumers will not take it. But if you have attractive content, you create reach. More and more homes get connected. The more homes get connected, the more attractive the satellite again gets for additional channels. We have, uh, with installer trainings, we support retail chains. We also work closely together with electro consumer electronic manufacturers to jointly develop the market. <clears throat> I put here also cable operators, hotels. It's uh, not necessarily relevant all the time here in Africa, but it's also one of the ways we support. And jointly together, we also do some lobbying work with regulators, politicians, and consumer associations. We all always say content is king. Yes, content is very important. But if you can't bring the content to the end consumer, you can have the best content in the world. Uh, if you can't reach the end consumer, you will not make business. And I've realized, especially in Africa, but also in some markets in, in, in Southeast Asia, that distribution and the right distribution strategy is essential. I've seen pay TV operations failing because uh, the, the operator was not, uh, couldn't bring the product to the end consumer. They did huge marketing campaigns, everything was well sorted, and then uh, the consumer goes to the store and the box is not available. I've seen a lot of examples of this. So, the brand is always important, yes. Content is king, but if you don't have the right distribution strategy in place, you uh, take a high risk to fail your operation. And this is why we focus, together with our customers, especially on the distribution strategy and to support them with installer networks, to support them with retail stores, this is where we, where we, uh, where we um, focus our business-to-business -business marketing activities when it comes to broadcasters. And I just uh, put up the value chain. The value chain always depends also, um, is different from market to market, but normally you have the content provider, the bouquet operator, <coughs> you have a wholesale, retail, installer, and the end user. You have hardware manufacturers, and sometimes housing industry is well involved. Uh, and these are the different different levels where we help our African broadcasters um, to grow their business. We have initiated a um, installer program that we call Elevate um, to support the distribution strategy of our customers. In Kenya, Uganda and Tanzania. We also go to Rwanda and other markets in Eastern Africa. Um, we uh, do trainings now in Ghana, Nigeria, um, French-speaking countries, probably we start with Ivory Coast. We just initiated this um, uh, activity six months ago, so we're in the process of rolling it out. We support them also with uh, uh, marketing support material that they know also a little bit about the product. And um, as far as we know, we are the only settled operator who does that because we strongly believe that uh, managing the distribution chain is an important, very important uh, factor uh, of success. Just some examples, I mean, great brochures. Um, we, this is a, a picture of a training. I think it was taken in Nairobi or Kampala, I'm not sure. So we create dedicated, in that case it was together with Suku TV in Kenya. Uh, we create dedicated material um, where the customer and us jointly do the trainings and uh, accredit the installers. So every one of these installers gets a trained one day, gets an accreditation, they run through this program and that uh, he at least did, in that instance, uh, 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 installation based on the requirements given by us and the broadcast customer. 